friends, it is me, Mike Harmon, or HL Mod Tech, and I'm here today to talk to you about one of my cool modules. I've got one of my project-based learning lessons. I have got dragsters that the kids design. They do a side view, a top view, learn all about the design process, and then we cut it out and they shape it and they make a really cool design. It is built to be used with these wheels, which are fine. There's a large one for the back and a small one for the front, but they're large and heavy and when you're launching with a co2 eliminator which is this cool project you can see on the screen the weight of your vehicle affects it so what we have done is we have come up with lessons where in tinkercad the kids are designing their own wheels that are lighter and sometimes fancier and today i'm going to show you how instead of just using normal tinkercad you can complete that same process using code blocks so with this code in place you can change variables and change the design of your wheels instantly and then you can 3d print them put them on the track and see how the actual results change as you make new wheels totally cool totally awesome check it out First things first, code blocks are down here, and when you click it, it'll show you a bunch of built-in templates that you can fiddle with, but people are often confused that their projects are down below. I'm going to slide back up, and I'm going to choose a new design, and you're greeted with this workspace where you can name your file, you've got your shapes, you've got where it shows up, and the code that you're going to drop in. I'm going to name it Wheels MDH, and I'm going to put a 1 after it. So to make a wheel, we're going to have to bring in some objects and combine them. So let's rename our object to be a wheel. Tell it OK. And then we are going to make a hub uh, for the axle. And then we're also going to make the wheel design. We're going to make them all out of cylinders. So I'm going to bring the cylinder out. I'm going to do Control C and Control V so that I have three parts. The first part is going to be the main wheel shape. I'm going to make it the color black. And for now, I'm going to tell you that a good radius is 18. And I want it to be really round. So I'm going to put in 64 for how many sides it has. When I hit play, you'll see that shape show up over here. It's crazy huge. I want it to be 2 millimeters thick instead. And then I'm going to drop the next part in place. I'm going to make it black as well. It is going to be the center of the uh, hub. I'm going to try three millimeters, which means it'll be a total of six. I want it to be six millimeters high, so that's how much we'll be able to attach to the axle. And once again, I'm going to do 64 for the sides. And then the last piece is going to be the tiny hole where the axle attaches. And it has to be 1.7 millimeters for a radius. And I'm going to make its height eight just so we can see it poking out. And to make it nice and smooth, I'm going to make it 64 as well. When we hit play, I'm going to show you something about this project. Whenever you use code blocks, they draw at exactly 0, 0. So each of these items needs, needs to be raised up half of its height for them to show up where we want. Let me show you how to fix that. Bring out your move. When you click on it, you can do Control c and Control v to make the three moves you need. You can drop them in between and then simply put the Z that is half of what the height was. So this 2 becomes a 1. This 6 becomes a 3. And then the last one's 8. I need it to move up 4. When I hit play this time, you'll see my parts all line up at absolute 0. You'll notice it's not combined and we simply fix that by doing create group at the end of it this time when we hit play you have got your first usable wheel but now it's time to make it much much more epic we're going to do that by creating a new object called spoke and we want to put it above the wheel so that it occurs first the spokes are shapes that can be cut out of our project to start with i'm going to cut out a cylinder I would like this to be adjustable, so instead of putting in a real radius, I'm going to put in a variable. I'm going to put these at the very top so that they can be used all the way throughout the project, and I'm going to rename this one as size. That's kind of nice and flexible. I can use whatever I want. I'm going to try size 4, and once this project runs, I'll say, hey, it's good, or I'll adjust it and make it something else. 
So let's take this size and put it where the radius was by just dropping it in the box. We can leave the height large because it's going to be a piece that's cut out. You could do something crazy like put in six and make the design a hexagon. Well, it looks like the fewest sides it can do is 12, so I'm going to change that to 12. Hit play and just make sure that turned out the way I expect. So let's put this part inside our code using the awesome count with i. You could change this to any variable, but I'm going to leave it with i. I'm going to count from 0, and I want to go to 4, because I want 4 of these, and I want it to count by 1. When you want to reuse an object, you can go to Modify, and you can add a copy of the object. This is awesome because we can make the object a whole, which is what I want for cutting these out. Find in your data the object. My object is still called Object 0. I'm going to fix that, and I'm going to rename it Spoke because I'm going to cut these spokes out of the project. I drop spoke in, and then I've got to tell it how to move. So once again, I bring out a modify. And this time, I want it to move away from the center of the project, but I want to have it use some math. So I'm going to create a couple more variables. First variable I create is going to be called radius. And the beauty of that is it's going to keep track of the size of our wheel. And then we can make a variable for the offset. So then we can tell how far these spokes need to be from the edge of the wheel. So once again, bring out your create variable. Let's rename it and call it offset. I'm going to nudge these down so they're out of the way a little bit. Make sure I don't lose my create group because I'll need it later. So we need to do the math for x. And we're going to do that with one of these operators. Drop it in the x box. Notice you can tell which one you're in because it turns white. And then we're going to drop some components in these. And these are the radius. Making sure don't drop it on the big edge. See how everything's white right there? We want to drop it in the hole. And then we're going to subtract that offset number. And then we want this to rotate each time that it happens. So we're going to go back to modify, bring out a rotate. We want to rotate around the Z axis because we're looking at this from the top. Because we're doing four, each one is 90 degrees. And we want to pivot from absolute zero, which we can find in the math and drop it in. When that's done, we want to delete our spoke, because that spoke does not get added to our project. Go back down to your data so you can clean it up. And then finally, create a group. And let's see what our adjusted wheel looks like. All right, this is one of the fun ones where you say, oh, crap, what did I do? Uh, I forgot to type in the radius. So 0 minus 0 was 0. I'm going to give an offset of 3. And let's watch this one more time and see if we finally get to see a little bit of success. Hey, there you see it moving. Now, they all move to the same spot, and let me show you why. I had the rotation always set for 90. I want to put some math in there, and I want it to always increase as it goes across. So the first time that it happens, I want it to be 90, and I want it to be times, and I'm going to have it be times i, the variable. And let's see how that works when we run it. So there you can see the code is working really well, but how good is my offset? My offset is giving me issues, but here's where you do some trial and error. Notice I increase the speed. I'm going to type 1.5, and let's see what we get this time. Still chopped them up. Let's try increasing that number instead. I'll try 4, and let's see what we get this time. 
there you've got workable wheels for the first time. Now some things I notice, I'm not sure I like the 12 sided one. So if I went back to my sides, I could make it 36 and I can instantly hit play and check it out. I think that's a better looking wheel. I don't think there's enough wheel out here on the edge though. So then I can go back and I can adjust this and try an offset of five. That looks a little bit more sturdy. The beauty of what I've given you so far is you can create this exact same project, but you can make it adjustable for how many rotations. So you can squeeze in more of these spokes. You can also really easily put different shapes in these parts. Say you wanted to subtract squares. If you put a square in there and change its size to five by five, so you're sure it fits, it's that easy to cut something different out of your shape. And there you can see, after I ran it a second time, there are my silly squares. Now I don't want squares, but I'm just showing you that you can cut out cylinders, cool roofs, maybe crazy cones, maybe the round roof. You could cut words out possibly. The wedge is a neat shape. Uh, you could do the polygon shape, which definitely would get you your six-sided shape. Hearts, stars, tubes. Well, that'd be silly because you'd have the leftover middle. But there's no limit to how you can customize this if you want to. Speaking of customization, let's take the radius and drop it in here. So I'm going to go to my data. And since the radius is now in the part of the project where I can change it, if I go up here and make this uh, 35, which would be insane, watch what happens. I've got a crazy large wheel that has a 35, and it still has this silly part that needs to be deleted, but that's just how we're going to make them when it really matters. I'm going to throw this in the trash. I'm going to bring this down here. I'm going to set my number back to the 18 that I know works, and boom show off that customizable wheel that you can build and then be ready to export so you can do your own 3D prints for your dragsters. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this. If you end up making this project and you come up with a cool design, please share it with us at HL Mod Tech on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. If you liked what you learned here, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Keep tabs on our post by clicking that notification bell. And if you have a question or a comment, please leave it down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.